Good morning, dear learners. Welcome to teaching learning session. Today we discuss about information systems, economics, and security. It is very important that our information system should be economical and should have securities because our information is very important. For any organization, information is of vital importance and it is the priority of the organization to secure the information. Uh, with the industrialization process, it becomes necessary for industrial owners and managers to keep the records of inventory and accounts. And it was very difficult to manage the uh, accounts and inventory manually. So they look for something which helps them in keeping records of inventory and records and on, on the basis of uh, these inventory and accounts or the information they can take the decision for decision making in short for decision making information is required in any organization information technology exists in the form of information system Whenever an external or internal demand anticipated or felt by the information, felt by the organization, information system helps the organization to plan critical response activities. The organization take the proactive measures rather, rather than firefighting measures based on information provided. So in short, information system is important. It provides uh, it helps in decision making process information uh, through information system organizations take proactive steps rather than firefighting rather than looking for something else information systems helps in decision making before we end what is information as i told information system information system what is information what is system what is information before uh, i explain information to you it is very important that you should understand the data what is data raw facts and figures is known as data information processed data is known as information when data have been put in a meaningful and useful uh, context and communicate it to recipient who uses it to make a decision. It reduces uncertainty, reveals additional alternatives or helps to eliminate irrelevant or poor ones. Raw facts and figures is known as data. Let me explain it with example. Suppose um, I have few, few figures like uh, Ravi, Lakshmi, 2001, 98, 54. Lakshmi, 2005, 48, 54. Can you make out what is this? Right? Uh, this is raw facts and figures. When I put it into a meaningful context so that it helps in decision making and uh, then it becomes the information uh, let's say name Ravi say uh, name of the student Ravi enrollment year 2001 enrollment number 95 marks 54 Next student is name of next student Lakshmi. Enrollment year 2003. Say. Enrollment year 2005. Marks 64. 64%. Now this is information. When you put the raw facts and figures in a meaningful way, which helps in decision making, uh, that is known as information and information helps in decision making decision making is what a uh, decision making is choosing best alternative from the available alternatives and you create the alternatives 
on the basis of information provided to you. Information makes the person knowledgeable. Knowledge is an awareness and understanding of set of information that helps in decision making. Knowledge makes a person wise. The sequence of data, information and knowledge is data is processed to get the information. Information makes a process, a person knowledgeable and knowledge is created to wisdom. So abbreviated as D-I-K-W-F-K-W. That is data. Data is processed to produce information. Information makes a person knowledgeable, K, and the knowledge so created adds to the wisdom. And this helps in decision making. There are certain characteristics of information. First characteristic is information should be accurate and error free. If your information is not accurate and error prone, then you cannot take the right decision. It should be accurate. Information should be complete. It should not be filtered that present a biased picture to a recipient. It should be complete. Provide the complete information. Don't filter the information. On the basis of the complete information, user can take the decision. Information should be economical. It is associated with cost and it's, it is expected to be beneficial for the recipient. The benefit must be much greater than the cost. Everything has a cost. Similarly, information is associated with cost. Cost is associated with the information and it is expected that this information should be beneficial and the benefits of the information should be more than the cost. So it should be economical. Flexibility. Information should be flexible enough to present different views of data to different people. If I want reports or different reports with different fields, then it should be able to provide me different reports with the different fields. Or records. Information should be reliable and verifiable. Reliable means what? Reliable is that you can depend on it. It should be accurate. If it is accurate, you can rely on that. Both data and information should be reliable because if your data is not accurate or reliable, the information cannot be reliable. If, if there is any doubt, the user should verify that information. So it should be reliable, it should be verifiable, you should be able to verify that information if there is any doubt. A relevant, next characteristic of information is relevant. Information should be relevant. Relevant means self-explanatory. And it should be, it should, the information should be the info which I should get the information which I need or which is required. No one wants irrelevant data or information. The information should be relevant, should be flexible, should be reliable and verifiable. Information should be simple. It should be present in the proper format. As I have given you the example, it should be presented in a proper format so that anyone could understand this information represent what this information is, is related to which entity. Too much information may result in information overload and the user may not be able to extract the important information. There should be Information is required to take the decision, but information should not be overloaded. 
relevant information should be passed it should be simple and should be presented in a proper format so that it should help the user to take a decision to reach to certain decision timely information may lose its value if it is not received in a time so the information should be should reach to the user on time accessible and secure it should be easily accessible to the authorized person and should be secure from the unauthorized user because information is a vital source for any organization on the basis of information organization takes a decision so it is very important that it should be accessible to the authorized user and should be uh, secure from the unauthorized users so these were the characteristics of information a data life cycle how we create a data data first of all we capture the data after capturing the data we validate the data validation of data means validation and formatting whether the data is valid data is it relevant or irrelevant data we validate the data we format that data and then data movement and share after validation we share that data then after sharing that data the data must be stored in secure place after storage data should we user should be able to retrieve the data there should be easy retrieval of data for authorized user and data should be presented in a required format required by the user again this is a cyclic process after data presentation capture the data right so this is the life cycle of the data it's a cyclic process first of all we capture the data after capturing the data we validate and format the data whether the data is uh, required data or not whether it is reliable data or not we validate all these things after validation do we share the data with the authorized user we store that data then after storing that data data must be user must be able to retrieve that data and data should be presented in a way required by the user and after this data should new data should capture ethics and in information society and right to information it is very important that organization while capturing the information should you should uh, should be ethical one should while using a system information system everyone is supposed to follow the ethics it refrains from committing crimes by the unauthorized users unethical use of data could be devastating for any of the organization so one should capture the data ethically and should use the data ethically one should not use unethical means to capture and use the data with increase in use of it the government of india issues the guidelines through modification of it act there is an it act in india information technology act this act was implemented in year 2000 then this act was modified in the year 2001 2011 i'm sorry and then again it was modified in 2021 this it act provides us the guidelines and the digital media ethics code as per this act if any person without permission of owner or any other person who is in charge of a computer 
कंप्यूटर सिस्टम और अ कंप्यूटर नेटवर्क कैन नॉट यूज द डेटा विदाउट इंफॉर्मेशन इफ पर्सन एक्सेस सम डेटा विदाउट प्रॉपर ऑथराइजेशन द पर्सन विल बी हेल्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबल एंड कुड बी पनिश्ड the information system and their impact must be audited and user must be aware of the risks involved although act is there it act is there but the privacy is an important social issue privacy deals with the collection and use of misuse of data so it is very important that user should secure the data organization should have resources to secure their data should be ethical while using the resources for any unethical use of the data there is an it act which was implemented in 2000 and was modified in 2011 and 2021 how can we protect our computer resources and how can we recover from the disasters see there are the cyber crimes cyber crimes cyber crimes involves illegal system access and use of computer services networks smart devices over internet and this cyber crime has increased day by day hackers may use their knowledge to gain access to others system hackers can alter the data or destroy the data or they can have full control on the system they can make the system unusable and useless just by writing a small program to have control over such intrusion and mal practices organization uses various methods to protect their information information is vital for any organization to protect their information from hackers to protect the information from intrusion and mal practices organization uses various methods methods like biometrics fingerprint iris and retina scan face recognition legacy system of user id and password so organization use user id password fingerprints face recognition to open up the information system like your uh, iris and retina scan or another could be otp that is also used based on the nature of users business all these all these uh, uh, use systems is based on the nature of the business next would be installing strong user authentication and encryption capabilities on the firewall in uh, install firewall install strong authentication and encryption capabilities upgrade software with the help of patches which are developed by the vendor whenever security gap is found in the software every employee in the organization should be given a unique login id credential and such credential should be changed regularly by the individual just to protect the data system should promote user to change the password periodically usually after every 90 days separate zone should be created and maintained for different categories of the user this is required and this has been done by the company to secure the data that they create they create a separate zone 
and maintained for the different categories of the user. Audit trail must be used to track access log. Audit trail should be there so that one can access the logs. A document once created cannot be changed without leaving an audit trail. Integrated software solutions like ERP package maintain the audit trail. Or in case of any cyber crime, audit trail helps immensely. Because it, it is used to track the access log who has accessed the system at what time. Next could be to protect the data, install the good antivirus software on your system. Mobilize user to periodically scan the system. Email attachment should be scanned before opening and downloading files from the suspicious website, from the uh, suspicious website and should must be avoided. Don't click on any of the link. Don't download any of the things. It must be scanned properly before opening or downloading. Important is to identify the threats. After identifying the threats, appropriate disaster recovery plan should be there, should be implemented for computer resources. One should be able to identify the threat. After identifying the threat, you can take the appropriate measures to control your resources, to protect your resources. To control, to keep, uh, it is very important that you should keep the backup of your hardware. In case of natural disaster or due to technological failures, the hardware may become unusable. If you cannot use your hardware, you cannot operate your software. There are companies and the firm that provide disaster recovery services. A company may provide backup system that could be used in case of primary system fails. If in case the primary system fails, there is a backup there. There are the companies which provides the services to take the backup of your hardware and you can use your system. They keep the backup system so that they can use in case of primary system fails. Some companies also provide data storage services. This could be used to keep a copy of the data and with cloud facility over internet backup system has become very easy to maintain. So you can keep the backup of your system. In case of the failure of the primary system, you can use the secondary copy of your systems. Likewise, software backup, likewise you can keep the backup of your software and the software program are precious and assets of any organization. And it is required to protect these assets. A human error can delete a software package or a hardware failure uh, may make it inaccessible. A simple strategy is to make a copy of a software and keep them safely. So make a copy, it could be, uh, uh, it could be on the cloud, it could be on your mail, it could be on your floppy drive, it could be on your disk drive, backup, take the backup of your software. Regular and periodic backup should be adopted in practices. If the data is too large, incremental backup can be taken. So it is required that you should take the backup on the regular intervals. Because in case of a failure of your primary sources, you can use these backups. The smart strategy is to be proactive mode rather than the reactive mode. 
it may be less expensive to plan ahead to avoid possible downtime than the suffer losses so one should plan it proactively rather than reacting after something happens virus protection what is virus the full form of virus is vital information resources under siege it states that your information resources which is of vital importance for you it is under threat so it is very important to protect your vital information resources computer viruses sometimes known as malware it comes in different forms forms like macro virus this type of virus is normally found in microsoft word and excel files the virus increases the size of files when it infects them attaching its own generated code there are various types of viruses the first type of virus we are discussing is macro virus what is macro virus it is found normally found in microsoft word and the excel it attaches with the microsoft word at the uh, word file and this virus increases the file size of the virus of the word of the excel file by attaching its own generated codes when it increases the size you can understand that your data has been modified compromised next virus is boot sector virus this is the oldest virus affecting the startup or the boot process when your compute when you cannot boot your computer you cannot use your systems it hampers the this virus hampers the booting process of the system booting process means uploading the operating system and making the hardware operatable when your system cannot boot up you cannot use your system next virus could be resident virus it finds its way in your computer's memory it is completely uninvited and resides there when something unwanted resides in your computer memory how harmful it could be it resides in the computer memory it alters or modify the data present in our system or at times it transfer our data to for unauthorized access it transfer uh, it gives access of it gives access to unauthorized user of our computer system any unauthorized user can access our system success and failures of information system the scope should be stable and well understood if the scope of the project changes during the development or customization of software the project is likely to suffer in terms of quality schedule and budget overrun so when uh, when a system could be successful or a failure when you are developing a system information system they, it is very important that scope should be well understood and if the scope of the project changes during the development process or the customization of the software it is likely to suffer in terms of the quality or schedule or budget overrun an mis project that aims at reengineering the business process of the organization faces major challenges such projects are high risk but at the same time have high potential of major benefits 
if your project is well defined is well understood is stable and uh, then it will provides you the major benefits uh, before developing any of the information system it is very important that user should understand uh, the scope of the project the requirement why that project is required for what purpose we need that software or the project if user is very clear about all these things it will help the user to reap benefits from such system if this is not clear then it will impact the quality schedule and the budget of the system the technology development platforms and the development language exposures are other critical factors some technology may be new and the team may have difficulty using the technology the platform and language newness may also create trouble for the team so the platform and the language should be very clear which language one will use support from the management is vital for the success of the project if management loses interest in the project budget may be cut key people may be moved to another project and moral support required by the team may become non existent the system should be user friendly and the response time should be reasonable so that the user feels good to work on the system i hope this is clear information systems and econo information systems economics and protection it is very important that your information should be economical the cost in a cut uh, to procure your information should system should be lesser than the benefits you reap from that information system it means the benefits of the information should be more than the cost in a cut on the information system and it is very important to protect your information system from unauthorized users and there there is a law id act you can for cyber crimes if in case if any in, in any case of the cyber crime you can take help legally legal help transaction processing system dss and eis what is transaction processing system what is decision support system what is executive information system we will discuss about all these things in details information from data as i told you what is data raw facts and figure is known as data and processed data is known as information and while processing the data for information one needs to keep the following things in mind that is data should be accurate if your data is accurate then only your information can be accurate data should be relevant if your data is relevant then it will produce the relevant information that is the characteristic of information we discussed few minutes ago data should be complete <clears throat> then only it will provide you the complete frame of information and data should be time sensitive that is should be accurate and should be provided on the time because if time has gone then data can be useless and if the process and the information cannot be used it could be useless so uh, raw processed uh, raw facts and figure is known as data the characteristic of data should the data should be accurate should be relevant should be complete should be time sensitive information retrieved from raw data could be classified into different categories like as i told you that the um, <coughs> processed data is known as information and information could be facts of following types it could be differentiated into categories like facts assumption collateral information fragmentary information and irrelevant information facts are the accurate information that why we call it as a fact the information generated with the assumption of mathematical model is called the reliable information without any uncertainty this information is relevant there is no uncertainty about the information 
so facts are accurate the information generated with assumptions of the mathematical model in some statistical analysis certain amount of probability is used to predict the required result such information may not be 100% true this information is based on the assumptions so facts is 100% true it is without any uncertainty but certain uh, but few information are based on the assumptions that is not 100% true and these informations are called as is known as assumptions the other types of information called the collateral or the fragmentary information this type of information cannot be directly retrieved but is parallel source of information it cannot be considered as reliable such sources need to be investigated for acceptance it is not uh, this collateral and fragmentary information cannot be directly retrieved but it, it it is a parallel source of information so the source need to be investigated for acceptance before acceptance information systems in management management require the information system to take the decision because information system helps in decision making and the information system helps the manager to take the advantage of all business opportunities like information system will contribute substantially to the manager in effective decision making to achieve the organizational goals or the objectives so it helps in decision making second is information system will enrich the organization to meet competitive challenges it helps the uh, management to meet the challenges competitive challenges advocate and advocate and knowledge from the past experience will help the manager to integrate the business strategies information system provides the sufficient awareness about the external components and manager could react accordingly information system is required to take the right decision in right time because it provides the information you can take the decision on the basis of information information uh, provides the sufficient awareness about the external component and manager can react accordingly there are the various level of the organization and uh, information is required at all the levels we discussed about the levels of organization in our last lecture there are three levels of organization operational level of organization that is operational level or the lower level of management tactical or middle level of management or strategic or top level of management there are three level of management we discussed this in our last lecture right information system and the decision structure decision structure um, operational management operational management usually follow the structured decisional decision stru uh, structure uh, what is structured we discussed about the structure and structured and semi structured decision system in our last lecture so they follow the structure system in which uh, they just have to carry out the daily routine types of a process semi structured uh, tactical management or middle management follow the semi structure a uh, decision support and uh, decision structure and strategical level is unstructured decision structure information system used or required at operational level is tps that is transactional processing system at tactical level we need ds uh, management information system and the at the strategical level or the top level we need decision support system or eis or es 
So uh, there are three levels of management. Understand this thing: three levels of management, top level or strategical level, tactical level, and the operational level. Decision structure at top level is unstructured because they have to take the decision uh, on the basis of information, and there is no well structured decision making process. A semi-structured in this tactical management takes some decision on the basis of uh, uh, algorithms and few decision has been taken by the management on the basis of their intuitions and experiences and operational level take the decision uh, that is the structured decision they follow the structured uh, structured structure of decision making uh, they follow the decision structure type of decision information system operational at operational level we use tps that is transactional processing system at tactical level we use mis at strategical level we use dss classification of is 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 information system information system is divided into two operation support system and the management support system operation support system operation support system is further divided into tps transaction process system office automation system process control system management system is management support system is divided into management information system decision support system and the eis see there are various types of information system available and we divide these information system on the basis of operation support system and management support system operation support system means uh, uh, which has been used by the uh, lower management executives what they use they use the uh, office automation system office automation system means everything is there they just have to uh, fill the required field like data uh, data filling office automation system transaction processing system that is the daily routine type of the work like payroll they have to carry out the process of the payroll or inventory system though these are known as the transaction processing system these are the examples of transaction processing or a process control system management control system has been used by the tactical level of the management and the high level of the management tactical or the middle level of management uses the management information system it is semi structured type of information system and the decision support system and eis has been used by the top level of the management major types of information system is eis ess executive system that is strategical level has been used at the strategical level operating plan ess is for 5 year budget forecasting is for 5 years uh, Sales trending planning and forecasting is for five year men. This is for men power planning. Then comes MIS and ESS. MIS is uh, like inventory control, annual budgeting, capital investment, relocation analysis, uh, cost analysis, profitability analysis, uh, production scheduling, sales region analysis. All these are EMIS and DSS, DSS is sales region analysis, scheduling, and all these things. Then knowledge level system is KWS and OAS. That is engineering workstation, graphic workstation, managerial workstation, documenting imaging. Then operational level um, system. Operational level system is like uh, TPS, transaction processing systems like machine control. like securities like payroll compensation order tracking plan scheduling accounts payable training and development material movement cash movement accounts receivable employees record keeping these day to day routine works comes under comes under the tps right so all these are the major types of the information system at strategical level we use ess dss at managerial level that is at the tactical level we use mis and dss at the knowledge level we use kws and at the operational level we use 
TPS. Operational management level. The operational management level is concerned with performing day-to-day -day business. Day-to-day -day transactions of the organization. You should sell it. Uh, at this level, management includes the cashier at the points of sales, bank teller, nurses in a hospital, customer care staff, etc. They uh, they perform day-to-day -day activities, customer care staff. They keep the records of the, the, the customers, the queries of the customer. They answer the queries of the customers. Nurses in the hospital, they follow their daily routines. Cashier, they just have to maintain the accounts, keep records of sales of the day. User at this level uses a structured decisions. Structured decision means if some if a salesperson can offer you a ten percent sales because it is uh, given at their information system that you cannot offer more than the ten percent of uh, off to any of the customer, then they will follow this only that they can offer you the ten percent of offer. At this type of structure, this type of decisions are called the structured decision. This means that they have defined rules and guides them by making a decision. As I have given you the example, there are the defined rules and the guidelines to take the decision. That's why these are called the structured decision because they take the decision on the basis of the guidelines and the well-defined guidelines and the rules. If a store sells item on a credit, then they have a credit policy that has some set limits of borrowing. All the salesperson needs to decide whether to give credit to a customer or not is based on the current credit information from the system. As I have given you the example of offer, 10% offer. Then tactical management level. What is tactical management level? This organization level is dominated by the middle level managers. Heads of the department, supervisors. The user at this level usually oversees the activities of the user at operational management level. Tactical user makes semi-structured decisions. The decisions are partially based on the set guidelines and judgmental calls. That they don't rigidly follow the uh, guidelines but there are certain guidelines and the judgmental calls and on the basis of those guidelines and the judgmental call they have the authority to take the decision they can deviate a technical manager can check the credit limit and the payment history of a customer and decide to make the exception to raise the credit limit for a particular customer Take another example as I've given you that a salesperson can give can offer you 10% of discount on any of the item, but a manager can see if you are a premium customer or if you are a regular customer of that store, then um, a manager can see uh, your visits, how often or how frequently you visit and you purchase from that store and on the basis of that he can offer you up to 20% of discount or up to 15% of discount but not more than 15 or 20 percent that is uh, they are partially based on the set guidelines and the judgmental calls but they can The decision is partially structured in the sense that the tactical manager used the existing information to identify the payment history that benefit the organization and allowed to increase the percentage. If you are a regular or the premium customer of any of the uh, organization or the store, then on the basis of this information, the manager can increase or decrease your credit limit or discount limit. So he has used the information system to check your credentials. It is semi-structured. He has taken it is a semi-structured type of a decision. Because he has used 
the uh, information to identify your history, payment history and other things. Or your uh, visit to a particular stores. Tactical users make a semi-structured decision while operational users make a structured decision. They just rigidly follow the guidelines and the rules or the policies. Strategic management level. This is the most senior level in any organization. Or the strategic management level is also known as the top level of management. And uh, they uses the unstructured decision. They follow the unstructured type of a decision structure. Why they follow the unstructured type of a decision structure? Because their top management are concerned with the long term planning. As, uh, as uh, I have explained it, that at least they plan for the five years, five years operating plan, five years budgeting, forecasting. Five year sales trend forecasting, profit planning, or the manpower planning for the five years. So they plan for a, a longer duration, longer planning, long term planning. They are concerned with the long term planning. Top management is interested in the long term planning. They use the information from the tactical manager and the external data to guide them when making unstructured decisions. Although they required the information from the tactical level, they required the information from the external uh, external data, but they don't follow any guidelines. No guidelines have been given to the top management to be followed to take the decision. On the basis of their experience, on the basis of their objectives, on the basis of uh, the information provided by the management, by the tactical management, they take the decisions. They follow the unstructured decisions. So semi-structured decision, structure that top, uh, bottom level follows the structured decision, semi-structured, tactical level and unstructured top level of management. <coughs> Next is TPS, Transaction Processing System. What is Transaction Processing System? It is used to record day-to-day -day business transaction of the organization, like your uh, sales, sales record, like your inventory records, like your payroll records. All these are examples of TPS. They are used by the user at the operational management level because it is related to day-to-day -to -day activities and day-to-day -day activities have been carried out by the operational level. The main objective of transactional processing system is to answer the routine question such as how many printers were sold today. How much inventory do we have in our hand? What is the outstanding due or the due for John? So it is related to daily routine. The main objective is to answer the uh, routine questions, and they are and this has been used by the operational management level. And TPS are used to record day-to-day -day business transactions of the organization by recording the day-to-day -day business transaction TPS system provide answer to the above questions in a timely manner the decision made by the operational manager are routine and highly structured the information produced for transaction processing system is very detailed it pro provides the detailed uh, information Example of transaction processing system includes point of sale system, that is the daily sales, payroll systems, stock control, that is the inventory control, or airline booking system. All these are the examples of TPS transaction processing system. And next comes 
मैनेजमेंट इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम और एम आई एस मैनेजमेंट इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम आर यूज बाय द टेक्टिकल मैनेजर एंड इट इज यूज बाय द टेक्टिकल मैनेजर टू मॉनिटर दर्गेनाइजेशन करंट परफॉर्मेंस स्टेटस the output from the transaction processing system used as an input to a management information system is yes. remember this thing the output from the transaction processing system becomes the input for the mis management information system and information system management information system monitors the organization current performance status the mis system analyzes the input with routine algorithms that is aggregate compare summarize result to produce the reports of technical manager it is used to monitor it is used to control and the predict the future performance mis has been used to monitor your system whether you are achieving your goals or whether you are deviating from your goals if you are deviating from goals it is used to control how can you control your deviation and it is used to predict the future performance how can you perform better example input from the sales system sales system was the tps system can be used to analyze the trends of products that are performing well and those that are not performing well those those product which are moving fast and those product which are not moving at all we can make decision on the basis of this this information can be used to make further inventory orders that is increasing increasing the order for well for performing product and reduce the order for the product that are not performing well right so on the basis of the the input of the, the output of tps makes the input of uh, uh, mis example is sales system we can find out which system which product is moving fast and which is not moving on the basis of that we can make decision whether whether to maintain the inventory of which product examples could be example of uh, mis could be sales management system they get the input from the point of the sales system sales management system from this you can find out which product is moving is performing better and what is the reason budgeting system gives an overview how much money is spent within the organization for short term and the long terms another example of mis could be human resource system that is the overall welfare of the employees staff turnover etc right if someone is leaving the organization or joining the organization what is the turnover rate why they are leaving the organization uh, whether uh, the training training uh, the training is the tps the output of the training whether it has increased the performance level of the employees or there is no impact of the training on the performance level of the impact could be mis so human resource management system budgeting system sales management system are the examples of tactical or the mis tactical managers are responsible for semi structured decision semi structured decision means mis provides the information needed to make the structured decision and based on the experience of tactical manager they make a judgmental call that is the product how much of the goods or inventory should be ordered for the second quarter based on the sales of the first quarter although there is a well defined inventory system but on the basis of their uh, experience they take a judgmental call whether which product should be ordered further for the next quarter and which product should not be ordered whether to increase the credit limit of any particular uh, customer or not to increase the uh, credit limit of any particular customer based on the payment system of that particular customer next is dss decision support system decision support system are used by the senior management to make a non routine decision 
decision support system use the input from the internal system and the external system dss takes the input from output of mis management information system mis takes the input from tps output tps output becomes the input from mis and mis output become the input from the for the dss the main objective of decision support system is to provide a solution to a problem that are unique and changes frequently like what would be the impact of employees performance if we double the production lot of the factory how will how will we uh, if we uh, uh, if we change the product line then what will be the impact on the organization on the sales of the organization can we uh, grab a new market what would happen if to our sales if competitors entered in the market what would happen to our sales if we grab a new market what would happen if we deviate our line product line decision support system use sophisticated mathematical models and statistical technique to provide solutions examples could be financial planning systems bank loan management systems that's all for today thank you very much namaskar